Okay. Thanks, Seth. Yeah. That's really great. Um, so, uh, Seth and I have had the chance to spend a couple of days uh, talking about SEO and social media optimization and everything. So, um, we just kind of wanted to continue the dialogue that we've been having. Uh, choosing keywords uh, in a way that, you know, I think we've been talking a lot about branding and about um, sort of creating uh, your online presence, mm -hmm. choosing which keywords you're going to go with. Like last week we had someone in class who um, wants to rank for travel and maybe wants to rank for over 50, wants to rank for social media consulting. What happens when you're wanting to rank for all of these things? How do you, how do you choose which keywords that, that you should be focusing on? Okay. Um, kind of just using that formula that I showed, we can probably go back. Are they up there? Numbers. There we go. Oh, no. Next one. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, I guess I'm saying that making the decision, like, oh. like how, how, do I, how do I make a decision, like, of, of those things, which ones to focus on, or which ones aren't being ranked for, or, you know, how to, really how to create a niche. Yeah, I think, uh, I think what you need to do, there's what's called a long tail keyword, uh, which is, like, usually one and two keyword terms are very competitive, and so generally, like, three or more keyword terms are less competitive and that kind of gets the long tail. So you have short keywords where they have a lot, a really high search volume uh, and then you have, you kind of have this graph that as your words get longer, uh, fewer people are searching for it, but still a lot of people are searching for it. The internet's a lot like New York City, uh, like you can have a really specific uh, niche shop and still get a lot of business uh, in New York City. The internet's exactly the same way. There's so many people. Uh, you need to, to be able to, um, you can use those long tail keywords and find a niche that has, you know, high traffic. I would say between 200 and 500 searches a day is, uh, and is good traffic. Uh, and then uh, for a particular keyword, a competition, uh, I would say uh, like AdWords competition would be six, about around 60% uh, or less. Is, uh, what does that mean? Anybody? Clay Sharkey. Okay. Um, How's that spelled? Uh, C L A Y. Shirky is his last name. S H I R K Y. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we have coffee again this evening. Thanks to Sydney's Coffee. Hi, guys. Thank you. <laughs> and um, when we come back, we're going to do an activity around uh, brands, brands that have actually had sort of some brand catastrophes and um, we're going to we're going to look at them as though we were a brand consulting firm and talk about ways that they could have maybe uh, things that they could have done differently or ways that they could have avoided having that brand uh, situation um, this this next the next two weeks we're going to be working more on sort of developing our own brands um, now that we're we've looked at examples of brands that have done it well or maybe haven't done it quite as well um, but I think this next exercise will be um, uh, kind of eye-opening to see some big companies do it really wrong when they started moving into the social media space. Um, it's a learning experience for all of us. Uh, I'll put Seth's uh, Twitter handle and anything else. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. His delicious. His delicious. We, we'll put it up here so you can write it down. And um, also, if you go to gwenball.com, I've linked to Seth and to the case studies that we're going to look at tonight. Okay, It's not the first video, which is karaoke. It's the next <laughs> post. Okay, so please enjoy some coffee or take a stretch break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. If you'd like to kind of get an idea of what, kind of an overview of what we're working on, go to gwenbell.com, and then it's the second post. Um, social media boo-boos and brand aids. And you'll see yourselves. I have a photo of everybody up there. <laughs> We're gonna skip the video. Although I do a mean Pat Benatar. <laughs> In case you're wondering. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is take a look at some companies uh, that tried social media and had some a little bit some glitches. Okay. And just because the company has a glitch doesn't mean they can't recover from it. It just might mean that Google doesn't know they've recovered from it. So if you Google, for example, Skittles and Twitter, 
what's going to come up first is the debacle of, or Skittles.com might come up, but maybe Skittles the debacle with Twitter will come up. Does anyone, is anyone familiar with what happened with Skittles last week? <laughs> yes, someone's saying yes. Do you want to tell us? No, you do not want to tell us. <laughs> so Skittles, um, you'll see, is one of the case studies we're going to look at tonight. In brief, um, put their, uh, their Twitter, search.twitter.com results uh, as the background of the candy, Skittles. the candy, Skittles, the candy that you eat, as the background of their page. Um, two days after its launch, Skittles was forced to rethink its social media strategy after users deluged the site with inane and often profane tweets, the messages <laughs> sent by Twitter users. So Skittles wa really wanted to have this hyper-interactive environment, and they had it, uh, only people weren't saying the nicest things about Skittles. Um, so anytime you open up your, your site or your brand to uh, ge the general population, you can, and especially if it's unmoderated, they didn't moderate the tweets, they didn't moderate the comments, um, you can find people will say some, some seriously uh, disparaging stuff about your brand. Especially green Skittles. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, were they saying things just on their own? Was it something in response to what the company was tweeting? No, uh, I actually participated. I didn't participate in a vulgar way um, in the, the whole Skittles thing just because it was cool uh, that day. Uh, they, Skittles didn't moderate it at all. They, they didn't. Uh, actually, like, they, just, they basically just used an iframe and they, they took the, the twitter.search.com search yeah. uh, and they just threw it out there. And so anyone could write anything they wanted about Skittles. Uh, it was kind of an experiment, and it, it did kind of backfire in their face. Like, I was part of a, a revolution to try and, and turn lime Skittles into apple Skittles. Uh, and, and so that's kind of how I participated in that, uh, because it had, um, it was popular for the day. But, uh, yeah, there was no, there was no moderation. It was just kind of, they threw it out there, and it was, um, kind of a poor decision, I think. Yeah. So that's one case study that we're going to work on tonight. Did you have a question? I just had a question. What, what do you mean by moderate? So, um, and in fact, I, I don't know if we're, we're going to get into it tonight, but there is a, a company in this room uh, that has a website that people post anonymously about their, um, kind of their secrets, their innermost thoughts or whatever. And there are actually people moderating the comments so that if a comment is left that's particularly nasty uh, about a post, they don't. That never makes it to the page. Do you understand? It's moderated before it makes it to the page. But that's something that you choose to do ahead of time. I mean, well, it's a, it's a filter. It's a filter that you would put into place. Oh, okay. So basically, you're you're fil you are filtering the comments to to suit your brand image. Uh, companies spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on establishing a brand image. A brand is not a logo, it's, it's the way that you feel about a company when, when you come in contact with it. Yeah. And they spend millions of dollars uh, making it as positive as possible and shedding the best light on their product as possible. And something like this can put a scar on your, on your brand image and uh, you know, the way that you think about a company. So that's what we thought about. Mo moderation is as a filter yes. for your brand image. Okay, and then we're going to go up to the, the top one, actually, if you want to scroll up, to FedEx. <coughs> so what happened in FedEx's case, um, did, is anyone familiar with the FedEx social media case? It happened a few months ago. Okay, so in this, in this case, a guy tweeted, his name is Key Influencer on Twitter, and he, he just tweeted that he's something vaguely negative about the city he was currently in. And he was in that city to teach... FedEx about social media, essentially. Someone in FedEx uh, saw the tweet, uh, thought it was offensive, got it up to up the chain of command, and literally by the time this guy, Key Influencer, walks into the room, everybody's heard that he doesn't really like the city. Um, and they're not happy about it. And like, just, it got blown way out of proportion. Now, you're gonna work in your group and decide whether or not it was taken to the extreme. I'll withhold my opinion on this, but um, basically, the controversy around it is both on, on FedEx's side and on the guy, key influencer, slash his company, Ketchum, and whether or not he should have been, like, should he have been saying something negative about the city of one of his clients, and then did the client respond correctly, the client being FedEx.